and welcome to our 21st pastoral anniversary service at Life Changers Ministries International, where this is our year of abundant harvest. Our theme for this momentous occasion is renewed grace for the race, which is deduced from 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 1 through 4. To our viewers in the virtual church, whether you are joining us via Facebook or YouTube, we encourage you to like, share, follow, or subscribe to our channel so that you can be a part of our worship experience each time we gather. To our owners, followers, and friends joining us in the sanctuary for this celebration, we look forward to a corporate experience with you that will shift our next season. Our guest speaker for tonight is Apostle Raymond Wells of Living Waters Kingdom Ministries, and he is no stranger to the city. I believe without a shadow of doubt that there is a word from the Lord for this house. So I invite you to release your praise and lift up your worship as we embark on another life-changing experience in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. You can do better than that. Somebody give, give God praise. Somebody bless his name. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet tonight. Psalms 150 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the pastry and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Now the rest of you were looking at me strange, so I come to your verse now. Verse number six says, let everything that have breath. Y'all ain't serious tonight. Let everything that have breath. Somebody bless his name. Somebody give him glory. If I was in the old apostolic church, they would say, give him three notes of thanks, three notes of praise, and call him by his name. Call him by his name. Somebody say hallelujah. Oh, we bless you. Clap your hands in the building. Somebody honor the Lord. Honor the Lord. Honor the Lord. We've come to give him praise. We've come to celebrate 21 years of faithful dedication, love, and service. High five your neighbor. Say neighbor, it's about to be a movie. High five your neighbor. Say God's going to show up in this building. If that neighbor didn't look excited, high five the person behind you. High five somebody else. Tell him, tell him magnify with me. Let us exalt his name together. Tell them I'm about to get my breakthrough, so you better high five me right now because I don't know what state I'm going to be in for the rest of the night. Somebody give him glory. We honor him because he is faithful. We honor him because he is worthy of the praise. We thank God for he is worthy. I just want to read verse 6 one more time, see if I could find but three or four of you in this building. Let everything that have breath, if you could breathe in or inhale or exhale. When we went to school, when we went to school, after lunch, we would come back in, and this only for people over 50, right around the 50 area. They, they, the teacher would know, she would see the lunch, the lugginess on us, so she would say, hands up a stretch. Y'all ain't serious. Y'all ain't been to that school. Hands up or stretch. She would say then bend. Stretch. Bend. Hands to the side. I did not understand what she was doing. What she was really doing is quoting verse, verse number six. She was saying let everything that hath breath. Let everything that if you could wave your hands, give him praise. If you could jump, give him praise. Because somebody would trade places with you right now just to give him thanks we honor the Lord for he is good we call right now Pastor Cameron Roll who's going to give us our invocation and right after him would be our praise team God bless you 
let us pray father in jesus name we thank you can you pray with me we give you glory we give you honor and we give you praise father in jesus name as we come tonight father to celebrate 21 years of pastoral anniversary father in the name of jesus we establish your kingship we establish your dominion and we establish your rulership in this room father in jesus name we declare that the glory of the lord would rise amongst us we declare even now in Jesus name that you would release the angels of the Lord all over this room and father as we continue to lift our voices we declare in Jesus name that you are causing the earth to prepare for a shaking and a breaking father in Jesus name we declare that your presence will begin to fill this room and your glory will begin to fill this room now father we pray in Jesus name that you would anoint every part of this service that you would anoint father from the worship team to the word and we declare in Jesus name that there will be a synergy and there will be a movement that will work in this room tonight we pray in Jesus name that Jehovah Gabor would be released in this room now father we pray that wind and fire that fire and smoke would be released in this room so now now God we declare that the gates of heaven is open we declare in Jesus name that the mouth of God is open and we pray tonight that there will be a rising of glory we pray tonight that there will be a rising of the anointing of God so father tonight we declare that tonight that this gathering is open to the movement and to the authority of God we declare that it is so we declare that it is so we declare come on can we say it is so we declare that it is so and it shall not be any otherwise in Jesus name we pray amen hallelujah hallelujah can somebody bless the Lord with me let's just continue in that same vein let everything that have breath let everything that have breath let everything that has breath, hallelujah, we've come to bless his name and we thank him for 21 years of leadership.
Lord, you are worthy of the glory and the honor. And the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you are worthy of the glory, the glory. And, the and the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you are worthy of the, the glory and the honor. Bless 
This sanctuary said he has done great things. over this room can we begin to worship and thank our God for the great things that he has done not just for those that we are celebrating tonight but everybody in here has a story of the things that the Lord has done where we can all participate in this part of the service and lift our voices and worship our God all over the room can we fill this place with worship? We magnify your name, God. We glorify your name, Jesus. We honor your name, Lord. You've kept us, God. You've brought us this far by faith. And for that, we say that you are a great God. You are a holy God. We lift you up, Jesus. We magnify your name, Lord. We glorify your name. Lord, we give your name the honor that is due unto your name, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised, Lord. Oh. Say holy, holy, God Almighty, it's a privilege to worship you, maker of the universe, it's an honor just to stand before you. Say holy, holy, God Almighty, it's a privilege, we call you the maker of all universe, it's an honor just to stand before you. With a grateful heart, With a grateful heart I live my Proclaim and Lord your reign. Come on, all over this room. With a grateful heart, I lift my hands to you. Proclaim and Lord your reign. To be praised, greatly to be praised, Father, you reign, say great, greatly to be praised, greatly to be praised, Father, you reign, say great. To be praised, greatly to be praised, Father, you reign, greatly to 
be praised. Greatly to be praised. This room can be lifted to our God. Great are you, Lord. He's great and greatly to great be praised. He's a God that we serve. Great are you, Lord. Say my God, my God. 
we sing it one more time? Great are you, Lord. 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 Can we do it one more time? Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Just the voices. Just the voices. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. Great. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Most people seek to find somewhere to give him praise. If you know what you just sung, put it back on the screen. Great are you, Lord. When you were counted out, he was great. When people turned their back on you, you were great. When they said, that's it, that's all, he was great. January, he was great. February, he was great. Mark, you're looking at me straight. You don't need no place else to give him praise. Could somebody open your mouth and bless? Great are you, Lord. You are so great. You are so great. When they said no, you still was great. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. Father, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. When your back was against the wall. Hallelujah. Anybody in the building? When they said no, he was great. When man walk out, when woman walk out, he was great. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Get out of you, Lord. Could I just get you to plop your hands and give him praise? Put a praise on it right there. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Before the praise team move off the stage, I want you to do one more thing for me. Can you give him praise for what's next for you? Can you give... You're looking at me strange, man. I taught this to city. You're looking at me strange. Can you give him praise for what's next? What's next? For the rest of this month? For next month? What? I feel like giving him praise. Can somebody give him praise for what's next? Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Now that's in the heart of man, what God has prepared, your next is loaded. Somebody high five your neighbor, say, my next is loaded. My next is loaded. My next is loaded. Oh! If I was in Life Changes, I would just simply say, this is the year of abundant harvest. Nobody said that, no, that's not. Let me say that again. This is the year of abundant harvest. My next is loaded. My next is loaded. My next is loaded. Oh man, thank you, praise team. My next is loaded. My next is loaded. I wish you'd find three people, three people, three people you don't know. High five them, say, My next is loaded. My next is loaded. My next is loaded. My next is loaded. We honor the Lord. My next is loaded. Tell him, watch how you treat me, watch how you treat me, watch how you treat me, watch how you treat me. Watch how you look out for me. Watch how you treat me. My next is loaded. Watch how you treat me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Recognize, recognize. 
recognize yeah yeah something's coming something's coming something's coming something's coming something's coming something's coming somebody fit to have a may they'll never forget the rest of may you won't forget somebody's about to have a manifestation in the month of may april you won't forget it something's about to break loose in your life something's about to break loose something's about to break loose Summer gonna be your best month. Summer gonna be oh Jesus. Oh when things falling off and fall, you will spring forward. Oh Jesus. Winter gonna be your best winter. Somebody better give it praise. My next is loaded. It's loaded. It's loaded. It's loaded. No more dry leaves. No more dry leaves. No, no, oh Jesus, no more, no more dry leaves. Green, 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 green. Oh, green, oh, green, 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 green. Yeah, 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 yeah. My next is loaded. What's about to take place in my life? Ah, boy. I've been waiting on this season of my life all of my life. Nobody on this side. Let me see. I've been waiting on this season of my life all of my life. We give him praise. We give him praise. Fix your weave. Touch up the side. Do what you need to do. Get yourself together. Coming to give us our welcome. It's one of our resident pastors, Pastor Glenn Davis, coming to give us our welcome. God bless you. We have come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in His holy and precious word. And we have never yet seen the Lord fail us or forsake us. Distinguished guests, owners, members, visiting community, fellow ministers in the gospel, pastors who are visiting, KCF fellowship pastors, and our speaker for tonight, Apostle Raymond Wells. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this service of Thanksgiving, honoring two of God's general, and might I say, five-star generals. In the person of the one Bishop Valentino Devon Williams and Lady Kenva Cleopatra Williams. I give all the government name so the enemy could know just who we honor in tonight. Two of God's finest. As we convene under the theme renewed grace for the race we are reminded of the enduring grace that god has bestowed upon us and that has sustained us over the past 21 years whether you have been here from year one or you have come in year 21. over the past 21 years we have witnessed the transformative power of god through these two chosen vessels we have seen tremendous growth in the, under their leadership. Souls have been saved, lives transformed, leaders developed, congregations expanded, assets increased, and an overall passion and zeal for the work of the kingdom. You see, 21 years in human development marks a significant milestone. It represents a coming of age. It represents a rite of passage. It represents new beginnings. It represents transition into adulthood. It also represents independence and legality. 
I welcome you to this coming of age celebration. Feel free to participate and to celebrate these two five-star generals that God has blessed us with. If this was a military ceremony, we would have what is called a 21-gun salute. Which is a traditional ceremony honoring those who are in high-ranking positions. It symbolizes reverence. It symbolizes respect. It symbolizes recognition for hard work. The Bible says, know them who works hard among you and esteem them highly for their work's sake. With this in mind, we will have a 21 gun salute. SWAT, pull out the guns. No, we can't fire off guns in the house of the Lord. But we will have a 21 gun salute. Stand in reverence as we celebrate these two five star generals. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you know, we, yours and them, you, you, you and you, you are all welcome. Somebody pick up the shells, okay? Pick the shells up. Don't, don't let them know where the shells come from. Pick the shells up. We give God praise tonight. We give him praise. Coming with a pastoral tribute. My sister, the one and only, <laughs> Pastor Fran John Brennan. Here he, her, as she comes. Come on and give the Lord praise. Oh, y'all could give him a better praise than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am so honored to be here on tonight and to have been asked to give a tribute to my pastors. I will stand on the established protocol and I honor the Lord for all of you that labor in the vineyard on tonight. If my late husband was here, I am sure that he would have had this assignment. And on the way here, I would have had to give him the pep talk. I would have had to say, now nah, David, no foolishness out of you tonight. No crying, no hollering, no, you know, none of that tonight. Just govern yourselves accordingly. Of course, we would laugh about it. And regardless, he would still cry when it was time to give his tribute to his pastors. At that time, I was consumed with acting in a support role of the apostle and didn't quite understand the depth and the magnitude of the love that he had for this amazing couple. Then this day arrived and they had to give me 
the pep. I had to give myself the pep talk. Now, lady, don't cry. Get yourself together. Just go up there, do the tribute, and sit down. I'm hoping that that works tonight. <laughs> Bishop Valentino and Dr. Cleo has been so good to me and my family. I would like to just give you a few examples of what my pastor would have been in my life. I'm going to use a few words that best describe who they are to me. Valiant. Bishop Valentino and Cleopatra, Dr. Cleo, taught me to be valiant when we started the New Life Restoration Ministries. Bishop was instrumental in, in assisting us to bring our vision to reality. He encouraged us to heed the voice of God and to be guided solely by God. I took courage, it took courage to start a new ministry when persons thought that we were not qualified. He was there and he encouraged us the entire way while we were installed as pastors. The word dedication comes to mind. My pastors have been dedicated to our well-being. The calls, the text messages, the random words of encouragement showed me how to be dedicated to my assignment. While I know that they both have their own heavy assignments, it was never too much for them to check on me and new life. I want to say that they are kind-hearted. Yes, they are kind-hearted. There were times when I would have faced, been faced with circumstances that made me really angry. And in sharing with my bishop and Dr. Cleo, they have always been able to give me a soft word that has been able, that was able to soften my heart and to allow me to see things from a different perspective. Last but not least, my pastors are compassionate. This is where it gets kind of rough for me. Though we shared a very good relationship for more than 15 years, approximately two years before my husband's departure, through God's leading, my husband was left, was led to join the KCF network under the leadership of Bishop Valentino Williams. A move that I did not understand at the time, but I trusted the relationship that my husband had with God. As I was faced with the most difficult period in my life, while in Florida with Apostle Raymond Wells and Pastor Olivia Wells at my side, my apostle called my bishop to handle the breaking of the news to my children and my church family that their father was dead. It was a very difficult assignment. Needless to say, it was not easy, but the mission was accomplished. Since that day until now, the compassion, the love, the support was just unbelievable. They have cried with me. They have encouraged me. They have supported me. They have showed me unconditional love. They have checked on the well-being of my family and the new life restoration. My pastors have a heart of compassion. Today, now I understand why Dave cried every time it was time to give a tribute to our pastors. Bishop Valentino and Dr. Cleo, y'all have taught me to be valiant. You have shown me what it looks like to be dedicated. That's the V and the D. Dr. Kenva Cleopatra, 
I appreciate you for being kind hearted. And most of all, to both of you, the compassion that you have shown has not gone unnoticed and will not go unrewarded. I pause today to salute you, my pastors, my bishop, for 21 years of royal service. I too stand with Dr. Glenn and give you a salute. I say, for the next 21 years, not only will this year be the year of abundant harvest, but get ready to experience a harvest that you will not be able to contain. May the Lord bless you and keep you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 21 years of pastoring. And over that 21 years, 15 years was pastoring me. Lord have mercy. While getting set to come to church and sitting actually waiting on this um, service to begin I begin to look back over my life where we all began and what was the first thing that was said to me and and I realize now why people are drawn to Bishop Williams and the Dr. Cleopatra Williams. I understand now. It was 2009 and he messaged me just to check on me. Have you ever gotten a check on text from him? Yeah, just to check on me. There was nothing in return. He was looking for anything. And I responded and he told me, in 2009 I had two months under my belt. And here it is, he was telling me, I'm doing something great in the city. I said, well, what do you see? <laughs> I could barely read my notes, you know, doing something great. And he encouraged me. And he promised to open doors for me. He promised to do what a father would do for a son. And I realize now that we're better, Bishop and Pastor Cleo, because we are connected to you. A few years ago, we went to Israel, and things were not going well as far as the food is concerned. Side right there. Somebody know what I'm talking about. And everyone was hot, including me. I said, enough of this. Forget this. So I led a band of merry men and women <laughs> To find some mercy. Forget this. And I saw the humility of my pastors. They sat on the bus. And they still ordered what they did not want. Because they did not want to let anyone down. And I smile, I said, I won't be like these people. Because I already had up the hill. <laughs> See, enough for that. And he sat down and he says, I don't like the falafels, but let's get some, some more um, kebabs. <laughs> and we all smiled, but we laughed at it, and I said, that was a life lesson. And over the last 21 years of pastoring, I want to do something this, tonight. Stand with me. Hold on, not yet. If you're better for the rebukes, if you're better for the wisdom, anywhere, if you're better for the I'm going to stand myself, I'm standing. If you're better for the words of wisdom that they shared with you, if you're better for the corrections, nobody? What, what happened in this church? What happened? Y'all got to focus, man. Sit down now, sit, sit down, sit, sit down. Okay. 
Let's try this one more time. I am already standing. I don't have to stand. Stand with me if you're better for the correction. Stand with me if you're better for the rebuke. Stand with me if you're better for the words of wisdom. Stand with me if you are a better preacher, person, leader today because of my bishop and my pastor. Well, that pretty much sums up everybody, eh? Life changes, you have been great. I am one of you. My neighbor's string is buried right over in that little building over there. What a great church, a great place to grow. And so, Bishop and Pastor Cleo, we salute you for 21 years of stellar leadership. Thank you so much for being what we needed, being obedient to God. And so, as we move on, I have come to the end of how far I will take you tonight. So, in this order, here's what will happen. Coming for to his lift our offering is the one and only Prophet Pedro Cartwright. And right after he's done, there'll be a video presentation with the introduction of our speaker. Following that introduction, there will be, a spe will be special music by Living Waters, Kingdom Ministries. And once they are done, uh, winding down, I ask you to stand to hear what the Lord would say in this house tonight. Let's put a demand on the Spirit of God that he will speak directly to our pastors and to us. God bless you tonight. In Jesus' name. Good evening to everybody. Just want to give my congratulations to Bishop Valentino Williams and Dr. Cleopatra Williams for such an awesome job after 21 years in the vineyard. God continue blessing you. I pray his continued blessings. Amen. I told Bishop earlier, we laughed. I told him, I said, man, you look like you're aging down. You're looking younger every time I see you. <laughs> yeah. This is an easy task tonight. And I'm going to give you just a very, very brief parable to why. I'm from Long Island. One of the things we treasure is planting stuffs in our yard. So if, I, if you come to my house, everything in the yard, all the landscape, all the stuff in the back was planted by my hands. So in the back of the yard, this is, this is a short parable. In the back of the yard, I planted this expensive Persian lime tree. And about 15, 20 feet away, I planted this beautiful mango tree. The seed straight from Long Island. Coconut, all types of other different fruits. Five years later, the Persian lime tree looked the same. Pretty, green, not one line. <laughs> Every year I look at it, not one line. But the mango tree in five years has produced so much mangoes. I remember one day taking buckets out there just to fill up the buckets. Just look to your neighbor right now and say, neighbor, these ain't no Persian lime trees here tonight. Yeah, you, get the, you get the parable. These are, mang these, these are my mango tree. These, these are the... So when, you, when somebody asks me the question, does it make a difference where you give? Isn't that a question? Does it make a difference where you give? And I say, whenever you give into something that is fruitful, productive, you're going to see the results. So I want you to think about that tonight when you give. Amen? Because I want to declare to you tonight that this is good, good ground. Amen? Amen. Turn to your neighbors and neighbor. Chicken manure. Cow manure. Horse manure. Miracle grow. 
all that in this ground tonight amen it's going to spring forward it's going to come quickly back for you as you give and 21 years is a proven testimony and so i ask you to stand tonight as we're prepared to give it's a wonderful thing to give the bible says as you give it shall be what given back unto you pressed down shaken together and doing what running over shall what man give unto your bosom amen and so tonight i ask you to come with just a spirit of celebration can you give us some music that they can come this just dance as they give tonight give, give give them something to dance to tonight as they come to bring their offering come on and bring your offering tonight amen tonight father we ask your blessing tonight over all that give father we thank you right now that you're opening the windows of heaven and you are pouring down a blessing let suddenly come upon your people father God and we thank you right now that it will overtake them in this season in Jesus mighty name and somebody say amen amen, amen. Raymond K. Wells was born on September 8, 1967 in Nassau, Bahamas. He has been married to Pastor Olivia Wells for 32 years and they are the proud parents of two daughters, Raynell and Shekinah, one son Joshua and one son-in-law D'Angelo. In May 1998, Apostle Wells answered the call to full-time ministry, hence the birth of Living Waters Kingdom Ministries in Nassau, Bahamas. This was followed by Fountain of Life Kingdom Ministries in Roxanne and Luther, Bahamas in August 2001, and Rehoboth Kingdom Ministries International in Exuma, Bahamas in June 2019. Educationally, his achievements include a certificate in business and administration from the University of Miami, 
a Bachelor and Master of Arts degree in Christian Counseling from the Universal Bible College, a Master's degree in Biblical Studies from North Carolina College of Theology, a PhD in Organizational Leadership from Macari International College, and an Honorary Doctorate degree in Biblical Studies from the North Carolina Theological Seminary. Apostle Wells is a Marriage Officer and Justice of the Peace for the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. In 2013, he co-founded with his wife, Rima Preparatory Academy. His most recent accomplishment is being appointed as Chaplain of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force of the Bahamas. He received his Chaplain Certification on March 19, 2022 and was appointed by the Chaplaincy Training Institute as Superintendent for the Bahamas. With a desire to mentor other cutting-edge ministry leaders like himself, Apostle Wells has the privilege to father and mentor pastors around the Bahamas, the Caribbean, and United States under his ministry, Rima Connect. He is the Apostolic Father and Covering of Kingdom Connect International Fellowship, an organization commissioned and launched on October 7th, 2022 to connect kingdom-minded people for global impact. He is also the founder of the Men of Impact Award. To date, he has authored an incredible self-advancement book titled Living the Progressive Life and co-authored four others with his wife, namely In It to Win It, A Couple's Guide to Building a Healthy Marriage, I've Cheated, Now What?, Quotes from the Wells, and What's in Your Walls. His most recent published books are Things I've Learned from COVID-19 and Experiencing the Abundant Life. Ladies and gentlemen, Apostle Raymond K. Wells. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Can we stand as we go into a moment of worship? Let's just continue to sing of the greatness of our God. He is holy. He is wonderful. He is mighty. And God, we give you glory for there is nobody like you. No one, no, none can compare to you, so we lift you in this place. We give you our best worship. We give you our best praise. Come on all over the room. Can we pour our worship on the master? We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Great It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Anybody know it today? Great are you, Lord. Let's go from the top. Say, you give life. You give life. You are love. You are love. He brings light to the darkness. You bring light to the darkness. He gives hope. You give hope. He restores, you restores every heart. Every heart. Come on, say, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Say it one more time. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. It's your breath in our lungs. In our lungs. So we give it back to you so today. Your breath, your breath in our lungs, in our lungs. So, we pour. so we pour out our breath. Say right there, you it's, your breath it's your breath in our lungs. In our lungs. So, we pour. so we pour, we pour it out, we pour it out, we pour it out. Pour it pour out, it out. It's your breath, your breath in our lungs. In our lungs. So, we Breath in our love, in our love. So 
So we pour, so we, pour we pour it out, we pour it out, we pour it out, it's your in our love. So we pour, we give it back to you in this moment. It's your breath. Shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing great are you Lord. Let's lift it up together. All the earth, all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you Lord. Lift it up one more time. Say all the earth. All the earth will shout your Our praise. hearts will Our cry. Hearts will cry. These, These bones, bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Great are you. Great are you. Great are you. Say all the earth. All the earth will shout your Every heart has to Our cry. These bones will sing. Let's take these two seconds. Open up your mouths all over this sanctuary. We pour it out. We pour it out. We pour it out. We pour it out. We hallow your name in this place. We make your name great today. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. So we cry out. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Say all the earth will shout. All the earth will shout. Your Our praise. hearts will Our cry. Hearts will cry. These, These bones will bones sing. Will Great sing. are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. For the last time, all the earth. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will Our cry. Hearts will cry. It back to you. It's your breath in our lungs. Cause only you deserve it. So we pour it out. It's your breath in our lungs. We give it back to you. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour. serve a great God give this great God a great praise
If you would put your hand on the shoulder of the person standing next to you. That person you touch is a miracle. And they might also need a miracle. <clears throat> a whole lot of times we call the pastor to pray, but sometimes miracles happen in moments. Just a touch from a believer. He didn't say you, the pastors will lay hands on the sick and they recover. The apostle, the bishop, he said, they that believe, if they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. You're laying hands, so you're touching a believer. He's still a miracle worker. He's still a promise keeper. He's still our light and our darkness. I want you to pray. I feel the glory of God in this place. Pray that God touch your brother, your sister in a special way tonight. Come on, pray for them. Pray that God give them a miracle. Ah! He's the Lord that heal it. Yes, he is. He's still our provider. He's still our way maker. He's still our battle axe. He's still the peace in our storms. He's still our restorer. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, come on. I didn't say meditate. Pray, pray, pray. Yes, sir. We curse every cancer cell. We curse every blood disease. Every bone issue. Hey! Every eye condition. Commanded to be healed tonight. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. We declare you heal and whole. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Take your hands off my sister. Take your hands off my brother. Hallelujah. Now we thank you for providing. Meet every need tonight. You never give vision without making provision. So we thank you that every need is met tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, God, as we share your word, ranch your heavens in this place and come down. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. I prayed already, but God, give me a spot out of heaven to preach from. Cause us to speak as an oracle of you. Let the words of my mouth, even the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Whilst we at it, I pray for my wife as she travel. Pray for my dear sister who is sick. Speak, we speak healing tonight. Speak deliverance. Give a miracle. And we bless you. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever let everyone say amen if you would open your mouth and give God the kind of praise that get every devil angry come on open oh y'all ain't saying it throw your head back and shabak him he is worthy to be praised worthy to be glorified worthy to be lifted up hallelujah before you take your seat put your hands together for your pastor your bishop one bishop valentino williams and dr williams come on one more time put your hands together for them there
stellar leadership, men and women of integrity. We thank God for them and all that they bring to this church by extension, this nation. And the sky is not their limit. They have a planet with their name on it. God said to Abraham, I'll make your name great. And we thank the Lord for what he's doing in his life, both of their lives rather, and what he's about to do. 21 years. Someone asks, well, how come you be preaching for Apostle Lord? I say, ask him. Ask, me. ask him, but it's good. He's good. He's good relationship. He's a good person. I don't show up to everything he's doing. He don't show up to everything I do. But we love each other. And um, so, even every time he's getting ready to do something, he said, FYI, for your information, I want you to pray for me. I'm going in. I said, I got you covered. And to all of the pastors and the fellowship, we greet you tonight. It's a movement. And we're excited about what God is doing with that fellowship as well. If you would, get your Bibles out. They give me time tonight. They normally don't give me time. so. <laughs> and, I'm, and when I come back, I'm going to show you how to do the salute for real, do you? You can't do no salute like that. You get it. It's a special way to do the salute. It's a special way. So next time. Yes, sir. Nobody's do salute like that. You give it to me. You know, I've been around RBDF now for over two years. I've been learning a lot. I know that the police have a salute. RBDF have a special salute. And if you don't know how to salute our BDF crew, they, they take that very serious. If you're going to salute them, you got to salute them right. Yeah, and you can't, don't salute them like, the, like you saluting police. And don't salute the police like you're saluting our BDF. Any police in here? Any defense? Am I, am I, am I right? Any good? Uh, no. <clears throat> okay, let's go. We ain't come here for that tonight. Are we going to stand or sit? Sit, stand. What do you do home? What do you do here at New Life? Uh, sit, sit. Life changes. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. And I've, <clears throat> I, I know when I'm invited to come at Life Changes what is expected of me. I've been coming here now for, I think, since you, five years, you got in. I think I preached for the fifth year anniversary. And then after that, we've been preaching and sharing pulpits since then. And I think I'm the longest preacher. I don't think anyone preached in life changes as much as I have. Right? I think I broke the record. So let me try and mess that up tonight. Okay, so Luke chapter 5. And I, and, and, and I was praying about this. And, and um, I think I got the release to share this tonight. Um, Bishop said that the theme um, is the year of abundant harvest. I want to talk tonight from this thought, authentic partnership for greater harvest. Authentic partnership for a greater harvest. Look at the person to the left and right of you and tell them what the pastor is going to talk about tonight. authentic partnership for greater have it you're gonna take some notes tonight get your smartphone out if your phone don't have the Bible app 
or the note app where you can take notes. It's a dumb phone. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. They were washing their what? Mm -hmm. Then he got into one, uh, on one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. They were washing their what? He told them to launch out and let down their what? What Peter did? Let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they sink, signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. Let's look at Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter some of our pastors are here. Good to see them. Some of Living Waters, good to see you tonight. Thank you so much. I see you. I see you. Amen. I see my son, Apostle Bethel. Blessings on you, sir. Mark chapter 2. Reading from the third verse. Four men arrived, carrying a paralyzed man on a net, on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in the front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, not the man's faith, Jesus saw their faith. Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. Let me read that again. Four men, the New Living Translation says, arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in the front of Jesus, seeing their faith, not the paralyzed man, man's faith. Jesus saw the faith of the four men who put their friend on a mat, lift him on the roof, and put him down in the presence of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he spoke to the paralyzed man and says, your sins are forgiven. The four men, another translation called them friends, lift up their friend, tear the roof, where Jesus was, because the house was crowded, put their friend 
down where Jesus was. When Jesus saw their faith, he looked at the paralyzed man and says, your sins are forgiven. The four men took their paralyzed friend, put him on a mat, lift their friend on a roof, tear the roof, put their friend down in the presence of Jesus so that their friend can be healed. When we talk about partnership, what is the definition? Partnership has to do with either of a pair of people engaged together in the same activity. Either of a pair of people engaged together in the same activity. Partnership is a formal arrangement by two or more parties to manage and operate a business, watch this, and share its profits. Uh, let, let me say that one more time. A partnership is a formal arrangement by two or more parties to manage, 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 and operate, operate, operate a business and share its profits. God have no problem with you profiting. God is a God of profit. Yes. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. God don't only raise up prophets. He's a God of profit. Okay, let me try that over here. God don't only just raise up P R O P H E T prophet prophets, but He's a God of P R O F I T. He's a God of prophets. Where you are is not your final destination. What you have is not all God have for you. If you are alive, God have more in store for you. Uh, ignorance tells you, ignorance, ignorance tells you that, that you must give but don't look to receive. But that ain't what my Bible tells me. There's something called the law of reciprocity. Uh, as long as the earth remains, it would be seed, time, and harvest. And the prophet was talking about it. Glory to God, if I sow, I should reap. And the problem is you are disappointed because you're looking to reap from the people you sow from, sow into. And sometimes that don't happen. You can, you can sow over here and harvest over here. And if you're not careful, you can sow over here and because you're looking for over here, to give you the harvest you get discouraged in sowing when God said continue to sow it may not come from here but I got somebody over here who gonna give it to you because as long as a seed leaves the earth 
is obligated to bring forth a harvest. So God is the God of profit. I want to share about four partnership that's in scripture. Four different partnership that is in scripture. Let me set my time. partnership. I want you to write this down for me. I'm going to set my time. I'm going to set my time before we get in trouble tonight. Yeah, yeah. Four different types of partnership. Write them, write them down. Write them down. Four different types of partnership. The first partnership is what you and I have with God through Christ first partnership in the old testament it was directly to god but in the new testament uh, our partnership is with god through christ in the old testament we see the work of noah we when god gave him the plans for the ark and then we see it with joseph when god revealed how to prepare for a famine God clearly partnered with his people throughout scripture and wants to do the same today. And this happened, my brothers and sisters, through our relationship with Jesus Christ. If you are in Christ, if you have come to him and accepted him as a Lord and personal Savior, you are in partnership with God through Christ. 1 Corinthians 9, 1 and 9 says, God is faithful through whom you are called into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So once I accept Christ as Lord and personal Savior, I am in partnership with God through Christ. Partnership is an agreement with two persons and there's, there's profit in the partnership. So if I am in partnership with God through Christ, then I could expect benefits. I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. They that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled, draw nigh to God and he will draw an eye to you. So in this partnership with God that I receive or enter into through Christ, there are wonderful benefits. And then we have partnership in business. Business partnership. In 2 Corinthians 6 and uh, 14, do not be do not be bound together with unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness, or what fellowship has light with darkness? Or why, why Paul had to talk like this? What was going on in the church in Corinth was that people were going into business partnership and they were, they were having problems. They were being defrauded. And they were going to court with each other. And Paul had to come up in the church and tell them, y'all can't work y'all indifferences out. Why is it that you who are believers taking your brother and sister to court? Can, can one of you just take the wrong and get over it? So to fix this problem, don't you go into partnership with someone who's not in line with your God. You're going to cause division. Can two walk together except they be in agreement? So to fix this problem, make sure that both of you, and we're going to talk about that in a bit, going in the same direction and relates to your relationship with God. So you've got partnership in business. Then you have marital partnership. It's between um, a man and a man. Partnership, marital partnership between woman and woman. No, 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 no. Partnership in marriage and kingdom has to do with man and woman. 
Ephesians 5 and 31 says, For this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother and be united to his wife, and they too become one flesh. Something happened in that union. Something happened in that union that ain't going to be perfect. Hallelujah, it ain't going to be right all the time. You're going to have your hills and your valleys, but you make sure because of the partnership and the agreement, as a result of the partnership, you stay the course. Thank God I've done 32 years when my wife and I were going through in marriage. We were about to separate and we had to fight and tell that devil you ain't coming up in here and destroying this partnership. And we thank God we fought. We overcame the devil and 32 years later, we're still here because there's no such thing as a perfect partnership. And sometimes you got to find yourself in a valley, go through storms. You have to be tried and tested to, 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 to test the authenticity of the partnership. Oh, we're going to talk about that in a bit because people are right as long as things go in well. But soon as things get a little rocky, God called me to go to another church and to connect with another fellowship. You, 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 you have to learn how to take the licking and keep on ticking. Can somebody every now and then stop praying for car and house and stop praying for peace and joy. Stop praying for healing. Pray for some confusion. The Lord, the Lord bring some confusion. Pray for some warfare. Pray for some battles. Glory to God because only then will he teach your hands to war and your fingers to fight. Is when the boat start to rock, you will discover who is on board for real. Can I get somebody to open their mouth and give God a praise up in the Lord's church? Talk to a newlywed couple. They just got married. I say, y'all on honeymoon? Y'all should still be on honeymoon. They say, yeah, this honeymoon going to be forever. I say, yeah, keep on living. Keep on living. You're excited now. The, the bed is fresh now. Things are good now. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. When he start going crazy, you start going crazy. The finances start going crazy. The children start acting fool. PPL turn off the light. Glory to God. Water sewage acting crazy. Your body start acting strange. Then you start changing life. We're going to know if you're in it for real. Trouble. Test the authenticity of the relationship. Can I get somebody to give God a praise? You will hear the old folks say this. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come. It was God's grace, here it is, that brought us safe thus far. It would be his grace that would lead us on. Yea, do I walk. The good thing about it is we don't stay in the valley. We walk through the valley. I wish I could get somebody to shout glory. You think 21 years it's been sugar and spice? The devil is a liar. Nobody who have served anything for 21 years, hallelujah, didn't go through some fight, didn't go through some betrayals and some, hallelujah, hot times and some rough days. But God, who he kept, is a well kept when God starts you he will finish you and if you're going through now know that the grace has been released to you to stand in the midst marital marital relationship going out storms perfect Ask God to send a storm. Send it. So I can see if the smile is real. Send it. You see if they're going to still give. Send it. See if they're going to still show up. Send it. Okay. All right. All right. Then you have partnership with pastor 
and church. It's in the scriptures, it's all in the word. Partnership with pastor and church. Where's that? I'm glad you asked. Acts 20 and 28. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. Mm -hmm. Partnership with pastor and church. I, I want to share about four things. I, I think about four, maybe five. Five principles that I got out of Luke 5 to see if we can tie it into pastor and church. Pastor and its members. I think you all use that word, partnership, ownership. So, so let's talk a little bit about that. Maybe this don't mean that in y'all, because y'all know what it means. So I'm talking to life changes. Y'all know what it is. Y'all know partnership. It's in new, new right? in you so so I, I probably miss because I, for, for years when I come I've been coming with a fresh word so I don't know this probably in fresh this probably to remind you maybe that to refresh you mm -hmm. okay so <clears throat> When we talk about pastor and church partnership, let's talk about some principles uh, that's in the text, Luke chapter 5. Let's pull some principles out of there. If I'm going to join or be in partnership with a church, every local church has a pastor. No such thing as you got five, six leaders. All of them are leaders. No, you got one pastor. You got associate pastors because God, God ain't gonna talk to five and six people. You ain't gonna confuse God like that. He's gonna talk to one person. He's gonna channel his conversation when it comes down to the local church to one person. That one person then have the responsibility of passing on that information. Whether through the through the associate pastors, and then they send it down, and it goes down into the local church. But every local church has a pastor. The pastor is in partnership with the people. So this partnership is going to be authentic. I have to have a revelation and a clear understanding of what this entails. So what is what this entails? What this entails? I, what this entail? It, it entails first and foremost, write it down, me knowing the person that I'm going into partnership with. I know the person who I'm going into partnership with. Let me tell you what your problem is. No, it's your neighbor, not you. Let me tell you what your problem is. I don't know why I'm back here with this, this marital piece, but it, it, it also speaks of the church. You, 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 you see, uh, uh, you didn't get to know him. That's the problem. You didn't get to know her before you came into covenant. You, you don't get to know them. You don't get to know them. You don't get to know them. You didn't do any background check on them. 
you won't get to know them. And, 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 and the thing about it is, social media make it so easy for you to do some background checks. I can tell when people are crazy. Just go on their Facebook, that's all. I can tell preachers who are serious. Just go on their Facebook page. Just, I, can, I can tell people who are really serious about life because they put it out on social media. So he loved you. He said he loved you. She said she will connect with you. And you wouldn't take time to know them. You, 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 go, you go connect with the church and you ain't take time to know them. So soon as you get one little someone uh, uh, whisper in your ear, push crack, you gone. Soon as the pastor who you never got to know say something uh, 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 that offend you, you ready to go. The reason for that is you did not get to know them. You got to know their building, you got to know their car, their drive, you get to know uh, uh, their connections, but you never get to know them. You, you, you want to know what they could do for you, so you never get to know them. Paul said, someone mentioned it earlier, Paul said that you ought to know them. That labor among you in the Lord. He said, know them, get to know them, get to know their character, get to know their personality, get to know their vision, get to know their purpose. He said, get to know them, get to know what they are about before you cut covenant with them. See, see, when I know a person's character, when I know their personality, when I know their vision, when I know their purpose, then, not, then, then you will not be able to disconnect me from them because I know what you don't know. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. So one day, let me talk about it. One day, praise God, Jesus is speaking, hallelujah, to 70 of them. 70 of them, hallelujah, glory to God, his disciples. They're listening to the conversation. Jesus is in church one day, and Jesus began to talk about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. Hallelujah, somebody in the back row say, that's cannibalism. Glory to God, that's the theology that I'm not gonna be a part of. And the next one telling the next place, I ain't gonna be a part of that. The next one tell the next one, I ain't gonna be a part of that. And what the church split, 70 people left. Hallelujah, he turns to his apostle who he been working with for years. And he said, y'all going too? Peter got up in the Holy Ghost. Peter said, where should we go? You got the words of eternal life. I wish I could talk to somebody in here. Glory to God, Jesus is getting ready to go off the scene. He walked with his disciples. Glory to God for three years. He said, if y'all gonna represent me, you gotta know who you're representing. He asked the question, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Hallelujah, then they start talking. That they say down the road, you're this. They say up the street, you're this. They say down the corner, you're this. I heard one preacher say, you're this. One say, you're Jeremiah. One say, you Elias one say you're one of the prophets so he turns to them I'm tired of the gossip let me know you represent me you are part of the fellowship let me know if you know he turns to them and he asked them what do you say Peter got up in the Holy Ghost and Peter said you are the son of the living God and Jesus said son hallelujah that's the Holy Ghost flesh and blood had not revealed that unto you but that was given to you by my father and he said hallelujah upon that revelation of who I am I'll build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail because when you know who you are you will not be shaken when you know who you are you will not be moved can somebody shout glory thank you Bishop Valentino for knowing who you are that's why you're not moved over the, all over the place you're not moved by everything but the question is tonight not if you know who you are I need to know if they know who you are I need to know if life changes no I need to know if the movement no because if you don't know anybody anything any joker will disconnect you from somebody God connect you to that you never took the time to get to know Do you know her? Do you know him? And let me tell you why. 
And I mentioned this the last time and I think I need to say it again for some of you who was not out. You want to know why? Well, it's been coming all these years. He knows me. Hallelujah. You know why we've been connected all these years? We know each other. We're going to talk about that in a bit. Glory to God. So when you go to him, that foolishness concerning me, he tell you that's what you know. I know what I know. Oh, bless his name. And once I know what I know, I'm not going to let what you know or think you know deter me from connecting with who I know. I'm trying to preach in this place tonight. Oh, bless his name. When you know somebody, when you know their character, their vision, their purpose, you will pass all the churches, hallelujah, to get up in here. Oh, bless his name. Because I know him. I know him. I know him. Hallelujah. You ain't going to connect with everybody. You're going to connect with the right party. Can somebody shout glory? What's going on in the church today, and I'm not moved by it. I've been doing this for a little while, so I ain't hooked and stuck on people. Glory to God, but what's been going on in the church, you got some folks who are jealous of your accomplishment, jealous of your success, can't stand the fact that God is growing you and God is a, a, a doing some things in your life, and you got some folks who going around, glory to God, getting in the ears of people to disconnect them from people who God has connected them to and if you ain't mature enough and if you don't know authentically what that person brings to you it would be very easy for you to disconnect if I didn't allow what was going on in my life to cause me to disconnect from my wife hallelujah I don't know where I would have been tonight I know her. Your problem is you want to know the shoes and the, and the hair that's going to fall off in the next couple of years. You want to know the suit. The glory to God that came from China and it ain't cost much. Hallelujah. You want to know the car. Hallelujah. You don't want to know who driving the car. You don't want to know glory to God who wearing the suit. You don't want to know who wearing the person who wearing the suit. You don't want to know who's in the person who driving the car. You need to get to know the God in him. Get to know the character that God developed in him. Get to know the vision God placed in him and then get a revelation of the purpose in which God called him. Once you have that authentic partnership only comes when you know the person you're connected to. Some people only want what you have in your hands. They don't want what's in your heart. Jesus said, you all only following me for the, for, for the bread. You ain't following me for the spiritual things. You ain't following me because you saw the miracles. You, you ain't following me because you see the spiritual elements. We're going to talk about that in a bit. You just want the bread. And when I can't give the bread no more, you go and connect someplace else. When we don't pay your mortgage, when we tell you no, after we've been telling you no, hallelujah, for, for eight times we tell you, uh, tell you yes, for nine times we tell you no, one time, and then you go out and talk about the church never done anything for you. You don't want to talk about that. Authentic relationship means that I know the person I'm connected to. Watch this. Authentic relationship means that if I'm going to have that, I have to know what I bring to the partnership. Not just my personality. I have to know what I bring to the partnership. Before you go get married again, I 
I told the pastor, I said, yeah, this, you know why you get disappointed so quickly? You expect from people what they are unable to give you. You call that unrealistic expectation. And you frustrate yourself. I expect this. I expect that. I expect that. No, 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 no. People can only give you what God placed in them. They can only give you what throughout the years they were able to, to receive and download capacity. So if the relationship and the partnership is going to be authentic, I have to know what I bring to you. What is it that Bishop Valentino Williams bring to me? It's in the text. Jesus brought to them the spiritual thing. That, oh, oh, he, 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 he brought to them the spiritual thing. The, the Bible said they, they lift the boy, their friend, put him down in the place. The church, the place was crowded because Jesus was preaching word. I'll come back and talk about that some other time. Jesus was preaching word. The place was full. Glory to God. The friends, them lift up their boy, put him down in the face of Jesus, the front of Jesus, because Jesus was preaching word. The power of God was present to heal. So Jesus gave them that which was spiritual. Launch out. Let me your boat. I need to get in your boat. I need to get in your business. Just give me your business. Just give me your business. Let me get in it. Glory to God. Then launch me out a little bit so I can teach the word of God. And the Bible said he's teaching the word from the boat he used from Simon. So Jesus brought that which was spiritual. Paul mentioned it. Paul said, if I give you that which is spiritual. Okay. That's why, that's why Peter said, where should we go? You got spiritual stuff. Spiritual stuff. Spiritual stuff. You, you got, you got, you, you stood, you got wisdom. You stood, you got a good rebuke. You got good word. Come on now, that, 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 that's what you bring to me. You bring credibility, you bring integrity, you bring word, you bring prophetic release, you bring declaration, you bring influence. That's what you bring to me. You got to be saying, some of y'all got to be sharing. Hallelujah. Who, who, who got rebuked? Somebody stand. Hallelujah. Who got a good word? Somebody stood. Who got wisdom? Somebody stood. Glory to God. So you know what he brings to you. But hold on, y'all. If the partnership is going to be authentic, not only that I got to know who it is and what it, who he is or who she is, I got to know what I bring to them, but I got to also know what they bring to me. <laughs> What's, why should I connect to you? What do you bring to me? So Paul says, if Hallelujah. If I give you that which is spiritual, then why should you have a problem giving me that which is carnal? The partnership is, hallelujah, lend me your boat. <laughs> hallelujah. Let me use your boat. And then whilst I'm in your boat, you sit here, y'all on shore, and Peter and y'all, y'all hang out in the boat with me. Hallelujah. Somebody hold my towel. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody hold my water. Glory to God. And you be right here. Somebody wipe my face. Glory to God. You be right here to pray me on. You be right here to encourage me. You be right here to support me. I'm going to use your boat. Hallelujah. Go keep the net right here because we're going to use that too. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In a little bit, I'm going to ask for that net that you bring to this partnership I'm preaching better than y'all shouting isn't it something that you have no problem with your pastor giving the word bringing that which is spiritual but you don't want to bring your boat what happened to your boat what happened to your net okay what happened to your time what happened to your talent what happened to your resources what happened to your your, your net your boat what happened to your boat it's okay for me to call you but you don't call me it's okay for me to preach to you prophesy over
for you and when it's time for you to show up for the anniversary at least write a check give an offering so we'll see hallelujah you got a problem Whoa! What a word! What a word! Why our man of God preached today? Whoa! And you hanging out in the parking lot and you talking about the message and saying how the Lord used him. Hallelujah, glory to God. And you left out without giving an offering. You left out, come on now. Oh, the man of God this, the man of God that all, oh, the woman of God well, she could pray, eh? Whoa! You hear she delivered our word? My God, our pastor's bottle oh there. Glory to God. When was the last time you got on the phone? Hallelujah. When was the last time you text? When was the last time you sent a word and say, Pastor, you're doing a good job? Don't wait for them to text. When was the last time you text? What's on my nerves? My pastor do this. My bishop do this. My man of God called me. My woman of God checked for me. When was the last time you remember to get in your phone and send them a text? Give them a word of encouragement. Can somebody shout? When was the last time their phone ring whilst you sending money to everybody else account all up in the United States? Glory to God. When was the last time without tithes on Sunday, offering on Sunday, offering on Monday, his phone rang because you just sent a seed of appreciation. Don't look down now. Just keep looking. Just keep looking. And then we wouldn't know. Hallelujah. We wouldn't know. We wouldn't know. We wouldn't know. Let me connect with him, you know. In the house of Palamon. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I need to connect with minister this and minister that. And that don't happen like that. Those politicians don't ride like that. They take from you and don't give back to you. Don't put that pressure on him to connect with somebody because he in the seat. We ain't in the seat to connect you. We in the seat to fulfill a mandate. And you can get the overflow of our influence if you you know who to understand since we got the fellowship here who preached the law of reciprocity but do understand it preachers I could be 57 in September. I ain't leaving my wife for 32 years. I tell them they hurt my feeling because they remember my granddaughter when they do the thing. So you know I am in a different place in my head. Where I go now, where I go now, where I go now must value what I got on my life. Stop pouring into people who is not going to pour back into you. Can I don't, don't get, don't get, don't, don't, no, no, no. If they're not going to value you, don't give them the time of the day. I'm talking to life changers and the fellowship. Can somebody shout glory? We preach the law of reciprocity to our people. But when it comes down to giving to your bishop, you got a problem with it. It's okay for your phone to go off because somebody sent something to you. When was the last time his phone went off? I was so blessed today, one of my pastors, I ping! Not them in my fellowship in Living Waters. Ping! And look, he said, he said, Dad, I just wanted to let you know I appreciate you, sir. Thank you for being such an example to me and my family. 
What is a mess too is when you check the love offering, ain't much pastors giving no love. Ask him what are you looking for? I'm looking for an amen. Hallelujah. And you know, Dick Deacon giving nothing. Ain't no elder giving nothing. Ain't no associate pastor giving nothing. Only the lay members who sitting away in the back, minding their own business, getting the poor, getting the poor. Hallelujah. And they say, I got to send a note to my pastor. Tell him I love him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They don't wait for anniversary. And anniversary time is where you struggle to give 300. You got some people who every Sunday, they kick the love offering pop a, 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 a box because every Sunday he pours into me I need to pour back in to him <laughs> but what, 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 what he brings you want to know what he brings what I get know the deal no what you bring in the first thing is what you got to know the person. I ain't waiting for y'all. The second thing is, because y'all are mad, I ain't checking. I've been doing this a little while. I know why he brought me here. And anybody else got to call me because I'm doing good. I'm fine. My assignment now is only to go where there's relationship and persons who are really serious about going to the next level. Because people will wear you out. Okay, so what he brings, what I bring, what gift I bring, what talent I bring, what do I bring? What do I bring to this church? What do I bring to this partnership? Ain't none of you God called to just warm no seat. There's no, there's no such thing as a seat warming anointing. None of y'all. None of y'all. I, I tell you that you, know, you get hurt from another church, the Lord bring you here to life. How long are you going to be hurt? Get over that offense and move on. Hallelujah. Not only the kingdom have need of you, you have need of working your gift. You sitting in one corner, but I, I mess with these church people. You hurting you. Because we're going to work around you. We're going to build around you. We're going to pray around you. We're going to worship around you. We're going to do what we got to do around you. So the best thing for you to do is get over it and bring your stuff. The fourth thing, I got seven minutes. The fourth thing, the fourth thing is, the first one is what? You got to know. The second thing is what? What I bring. The third thing is what the person brings. The, the, the fourth thing is agreement. If we're going to be in partnership, there must be. This is what Amos said. Can two walk together? Unless we're going in the same direction. We seeing the same thing? Again, I say unto you, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything, they may ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. They all have to be in agreement with the teaching. They all have to be in agreement with the launching out. They all have to be in agreement because that was not only Peter's boat, he was in partnership. So, so now he is in partnership. He got to say, now listen, we agree. Now, we, all of us going to let Jesus use the boat. No, no, no. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. We in agreement. In agreement. The four friends, the four friends had to be in agreement. Now, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how the boy got paralyzed. But it's quite obvious, maybe he was, he was born paralyzed and then they built a friendship, mental friendship, emotional friendship because he couldn't do no moving. Or maybe he got paralyzed along the way. How, however it was, these friends didn't leave him to die. What's friends who gonna drop you when trouble hits your life? 
<laughs> That's why I tell you, pray for warfare. Watch them. Friends, them heard that Jesus was in the house and Jesus is preaching word and everybody in the house, the house is crowded. The house is crowded. I can hear them now. So you grab that side. The next one, grab this side. You got, we don't know how, how, how big he was. We don't know how tall he was. We don't know how much weight he had. Hallelujah. That probably wasn't important because once all of us in agreement, the weight can't do anything to us. We don't care how heavy it is. When all of us in agreement, hallelujah, the weight going to be lighter. I wish I could preach in here like I feel it. Somebody better come get me. My wife probably watching and praying for me. So I can hear her say, preach well. Glory to God, you got one person here. One grab that end. The next one grab that, that end of the mat. The next one grab this end of the mat. The next one grab this end of the mat. And I can hear them say, you good? You good? The next one say, you good? You good? You ready? You good? Now we're going up there now. That's a little ways to go. Now when we get up there, we have to tear the roof. Hallelujah. I don't know who owned the house. I don't know glory to God. Hallelujah. What they would have had to deal with for breaking up the house. I don't know who repaired the house after they broke up the house but I know what happened. When they came in agreement, their friend got healed. See, see, you got to get to the place where we don't care if they talk with us. We don't care if they hate on us. We don't care what happened. Hallelujah. We're going to get our friend to the house. We're going to get our friend to Jesus. Okay, y'all. We're going to get the country to Jesus. We don't care what it takes. Hallelujah. All of us going to get together and we're going to take your ministry to another level. All of us going to get together. If your marriage is broken, if your finance is broken, if you're paralyzed, all of us going to get together and we're going to lift this thing. And when it's all all over hallelujah you gonna get your miracle can somebody open their mouth and give God a praise in here I need a friend who gonna help me get to Jesus I need somebody in my life who willing to take the extra mile go the extra mile just so I can get to Jesus I need a pastor I need a fellowship who said we will deny ourselves just so one of us can go to the next level can somebody I came to preach can somebody open their mouth and give God praise? Somebody, I say somebody, I say somebody, I say somebody, you about to go to the next level. I came by to tell you, God is pronouncing the benediction on some people in your life because they're only a waste of time. Can somebody shout glory? I don't need 10, I don't need 20, I just need four dedicated friends who gonna come in agreement, we can shake and shift a nation. Now when we get up there, get up there, I ain't finished yet, y'all sitting, I still got five minutes. That's a good place to close, I know. I want the church go and the fellowship go to the next level after this. He, 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 they got up there, they got up there. Ain't nobody querying how you get paralyzed. Ain't nobody worrying about, they ain't into that. Ain't no, ain't no rowing day to day, ain't no bucking head today. We got an assignment. We got an assignment here. We got the administrative wing. There's you no know, time to fight. We got to build that. Glory to God. There's a movement in the country. We got to come with ourselves, with everything we got to shift the church and shift the nation. We ain't got no time for small talks. We ain't got time for division. We ain't got time for jealousy. We ain't got time for hatred and strife. Get rid of the hurt. Hallelujah. We need, you need to get your side. I get my side. You get your side. You sing. I preach. You prophesy I teach you get your side I get my side I promise you this if you get your side I get my side whoever church need a move of God we are gonna make it happen can somebody open their mouth and give God glory he puts him down Puts him down to Jesus. 
Jesus didn't even recognize the effort. Oh, yes, he did. When he saw that, oh. Not, not his faith. Why he didn't saw his faith? Because he recognized the agreement. The agreement was more than anything else. Hallelujah, glory to God. He saw that. Their faith. He said to the church, live. Said to that business, live. Said to that marriage, get up. When all of us live. Don't waste time with people who ain't gonna help you live. My time come and go. My time has come and gone. My, my, my clock going off, I'm finished. Uh, uh. Can I borrow t uh, 10 minutes? You could give it back when you get to living waters. You can. Because <laughs> you know, you do that too. You don't even ask me. You just take it. You just take it. Even. My wife say, Apostle, I never heard Apostle preach that long, but oh, it was glorious. Um, it was in the queen. Watch this. This is what caught me today. This is what grabbed me. This, this piece right here grabbed me. This piece. They were in agreement. They followed him. They obeyed him with the boat. They obeyed him with the launching out. But they disobeyed him with the nets. Let me come over here. They obeyed him with giving him the boat. They obeyed him with the launching out. They didn't obey him all the way. Because he said nets. They let down the net. Okay, okay, all right. Singular is? Plural is? Okay, so he said, let down the nets. Plural. They let down the net. Singular. So, 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 so. They gave him the boat. They launched out in the deep. But, but, but they didn't, they didn't obey him all the way. Wonder why they obeyed him by giving him the boat. Letting them launch, they launch out in the deep. Wonder what happened between nets and net. Could it be that because of the toiling all night and they caught nothing, could it be that that offense of not catching anything <laughs> caused them not to go all in? I'm getting up out of here. I'm getting up out of here. Uh, did I tell you touch your neighbor yet? Did I? Okay, this is the second. I tell you the first time. This is the second time. I, I touch your neighbor. Say neighbor. Don't, don't go all in if they're not going all in. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. Could it be? That they didn't go all in because they were still holding on to the fact that I've been talking all night. Where you been? When I've been talking all night. Now you coming up in here. Glory to God. Talking about let down nets. I done clean those nets. I'm only going to let down one. Because I ain't sure what going to happen. Hallelujah. They, see, see Jesus. Jesus shifted the paradigm. Oh bless his name. He, he changed everything. Because we catch fish at night. Hallelujah. We don't catch fish at day. So they were toiling all 
night because they know they're fishermen. We're going to catch some fish if we go out in the night. But Jesus comes and say, we're going to do it in the day. Because Jesus said, work while it's day. For night is coming when no man can work. Oh, bless his name. Shake your neighbor and say, God is shifting the paradigm. Oh, but I said, God is shifting. I said, God, y'all ain't see it yet. The church has already shifted. Y'all just wouldn't catch up. The nation is shifting. Y'all just ain't catch up. Hallelujah. Life changes already shifted. Some of y'all ain't catch up. Yep. the movement already shifted some of y'all still at the edge of the sea oh bless his name glory to God but he sent me here to tell you it's time for you to get all the way in oh bless his name Jesus you say next we gonna let it down oh bless his name I'm going all the way in you know you know why I still have a relationship after all these years because I only get in relationships who gonna give their all hallelujah stop playing with people who want your all but ain't gonna give their all i better get up out of here i say stop wasting time with people hallelujah after all these years you still just giving peace to yourself hallelujah i need all of you if the marriage gonna work i don't need you giving 70 and i giving 30 i need you giving 100 and i giving 100 we all the way in hallelujah shake your neighbor and say we all the way in we all the way in we all the way in and pastor gonna show up on Sunday and preach pour himself out as a drink offering wear up his shirt then you should be able to show up can I get somebody to shout if Bible study and prayer meeting is on Monday night you should show up if Sunday service starts at a particular time you should be on time we need you to be all the way in you want him all the way in and you don't want to be all the way in the devil is a liar hallelujah he don't come in his fullness until all of us are in the bible said they were all in one place they were all on one accord then there came a sound i hear a sound in this church come to kapai i said i hear a sound i said i hear a sound the bible said the oil fall from the head down to the bed even down to the skirt of the garment it only happened glory to god when you submit and you come together in unity there's a poor then he commands a blessing even life forevermore I gotta get up out of here y'all shake your neighbor say neighbor you can't leave it at the fifth point the fifth point is glory to God all of them benefited but you can imagine if they had let down their nets and all of them that give everything hallelujah we would have been a force to reckon with bye bye church see y'all next time shake your neighbor please shake them shake up and say neighbor I'm all the way in if you're in the fellowship come all the way in if you're in the marriage come all the way in if you're in life changes come all the way in because let me tell you something when you're all the way in glory to God everybody gonna experience the blessing can somebody say yes remind somebody what the theme message is the theme of the message is authentic partnership for greater harvest I bid you be, be, farewell tonight get ready cause eyes have not seen neither have ever heard the things that God has prepared prepared for you well he has revealed it to me by the spirit I told you when I got up the sky is not your limit it. life changes you got a planet with your name on it yes you better get ready because everybody if they come together in unity everybody will have a church full everybody will be out of debt everybody will have a position in the country everybody will experience the glory the glory of the Lord if your church it's not experiencing when life changes experiencing it maybe you're not all the way 
in but if I get all the way in the Bible said he throws the net in the water and the Bible said fish start finding the net and the Bible said there was so much fish in the net that they had to beckon why they had to beckon they wasn't close enough I ain't calling nobody to give them nothing because you ain't close enough to get it can somebody shout glory why should I waste my time calling you you should have been to the meeting you should have show up to the conference you should have come to the pastor service can I get a witness in here you're too old been around too long for us to have to be calling you to get in position I don't want that that ain't right shake your neighbor please shake him and rock him hit him high five and say get ready we getting ready to pull this thing in I hear God say tell this church get ready for a neck breaking season get ready for a mind blowing season get ready for an unfamiliar wonders getting ready to happen in the house go find five push them shake them and say get ready and overflow is coming to the house when the overflow come the life changes is getting ready to hit you heavens it's getting ready somebody shout glory God don't want life changes hallelujah to break and lose nothing another pastor said a net was breaking if the partners wasn't close enough the net would have break. Since Jesus was not in the losing business, he ain't gonna let you lose nothing. But he is disappointed that you ain't get everything. Let me come over here. I said he ain't gonna let you lose nothing. But he could be disappointed that you ain't get everything. Let me come back over here. I said, yeah, hallelujah. You, 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 you could have get more than that if you just throw the nets out. If that church to throw his church behind it this church to throw her church behind it and everybody throw their weight behind it we would have gotten a the net the fish was breaking and they beckon to the partners come come somebody come 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 let's go boy something happening boy come come boy come boy come 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 something happening something happening this thing this thing is overflowing we need you to come glory to God because something get it ready if we're not careful we're going to lose in this season. I was in sabbatical for two days last week. God said, shut down everything. Shut down everything. Don't turn no phone in your prayer room. Shut it down. Don't care who call you. Talk to them after six. Shut it down. One of the Lord things the Lord said to me, he said, son, I need you to pray. The doors are open. Stop praying for open doors. Come on. Stop the foolishness. He said, he said, he said, he said, I have set before you an open door. No man can shut it. No man, no man can shut it. So I said, Lord, what is it? Why is it that that, that you asking me to pray for this? He said, I need you to pray for three things. I need you to pray that you get to the door that I open at the right time. I need you to pray. The door is open, son. I want you to pray for you to get to the door at the right time. 
then I need you to pray for discernment so that you don't go in the door I didn't open. Because whilst there's an open door that I set, there's an open door that the devil set. And I said, well, how would I know? He said, I said, how would I know that I'm to your door? He said, the warfare is going to intensify. So he take me up into first, into first Corinthians 9, where Paul said the doors were open. They were effective doors, but there were many adversaries. And he said, son, what I need you to do is pray against the adversaries. And then he, he brought that to me whilst I was getting ready to close. He said, the door that is open before you and before the church and before the fellowship, hallelujah, you got some adversaries but he said of all of them lock hands and pray and intercede and come in agreement every giant every Goliath every opposition to have to get up out of the way I need you to hold your neighbor by the hand and say please can I hold your hand just for 30 seconds because you and I getting ready to come in agreement and we're going to shout and every glory to God opposition that is standing before the door of this church that's going to shift the trajectory of this church and your ministry and your life they getting up out of here tonight I say tonight every witch, every wolf lock every suit sayer every oh, come on now everything that the enemy planned and everything he set up to stop you I say tonight when you lift your part I lift my part then all of us go hear God say take up your bed and start walking and I came by to tell somebody you gonna have your fish 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 and the end of the day you ain't gotta be jealous of me and I ain't gonna be jealous of you because when God come in he want everybody to be blessed I'm gonna count to three and when I count to three I need you to shout in here shout because the walls are falling shout because the witches are moving shout I wish I could get somebody one two three open your mouth in here I see glory, I see glory, I feel like laying hands, I feel glory, I feel glory, I feel glory, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling, the lies are falling, the hatred's falling, the jealousy falling, hallelujah, the setbacks falling, the hurts falling, whatever they try, it will not work, I said whatever they try, it will not work, I've been sent tonight to let you know, he will not suffer, the witches to live get ready get ready for a net breaking season get ready for an overflow that's gonna go in to Elufra Exuma make water Canada get ready throughout the United States Africa Europe Dubai get ready If you feel it run up here get a seed throw in the ground put it at your mount of God's feet because I feel it falling I feel it falling I, f I feel like laying hands on some of your boy but I'm gonna leave that tonight hold your neighbor by the hand say get a seed put it in the ground a harvest is on the way I say a harvest is on the way I say a harvest is on the way I say a harvest is on the way get ready wherever we go there will be a harvest wherever we show up there will be a harvest yes if the movement come get ready
while she coming praise the Lord praise him your son gonna feel it your daughter gonna feel it your mama gonna feel it your business gonna feel it the nation gonna feel it somebody shout somebody glorify him somebody lift him up I hear the sound of abundance of rain yes I'm waiting on you yes gonna praise God for this word tonight give me a high praise somebody lift up your voice come on come on lift up your voice come on lift up your voice come on come on we gonna put a praise on this word tonight come on come on come on every pastor every leader every believer give, give God a praise for this word tonight come on give him a praise for this word tonight God God sent you here tonight so that you can receive this word tonight Give God a praise for his word tonight. Give him a praise for his word. Give him a praise for his word. Authentic partnership for an abundant harvest. If you know that this is your abundant harvest season, why don't you clap those hands and give the Lord a shout of praise? Come on, I'm talking for your church. I'm talking for your business. I'm talking for your marriage. Come on, I'm talking for your children. Those who are in college, whether it's UB or in the US, wherever they may be. Let's give God a praise for the abundant harvest that is coming to your house. Glory to God. Glory to God. Anybody got a praise left in them tonight? Anybody have a praise left in them tonight? We get ready to wrap this service up, but you gotta carry something back to your church. You gotta carry something back to your home. You gotta carry it back to your business establishment. Give them another shout of praise if you receive the word of the Lord in this place on this evening. What an incredible word tonight for the people of God. Would you stand all over this place? Dr. Cleo, come be with me. All over this room. I want you to hold hands because we talked about partnership tonight. And I've been with this man of God for just about 21 years. And every single year, this man has added value to my life outside of this church outside of ministry I know him that's why I connect with him I know his spirit I know his character I know what he brings to my life and by extension, what he brings to this local assembly. We stand in agreement. Just about every event we have, he knows about it. And we stand in agreement. What I love about Apostle Wells is that he never treated me differently from 2005, 2006 when he didn't have a facility like this to come in but he had to climb stairs into a small 20 by 40 storefront he would bring his camera system and his men every time we call him and from about 2006 7 to now he has never treated me differently 
I say that to say our relationship is not built on stuff because when we had nothing he was still the same person and apostle I just want to say publicly almost 17 years later from we first connected you've always been the same to me to my wife to my family and I want the world to know I love you and I thank God for our connection every time I call you you was there for me and even when we go through challenges in our ministry and I call for counsel your wisdom would always be sound you've never led me astray and tonight sir in the front of all of these pastors and friends and family members and those from living waters I salute you sir I thank you you have been a trusted voice in my life and I can put on record even now Valentino is where he is in part to Apostle Raymond Wells. Love you, sir. Love Olive, Pastor Olivia. Love your family. Love living waters. I honor the Lord for you. Thank you for once again coming, pouring into this house. Can we give God praise for Apostle Raymond Wells? While you're connecting all over this room, we're getting ready to close our service tonight. We are just so happy that so many of you from far and near have come to share in this time with us. You know, there are so many things going on and for you to take time out of your schedule to be here tonight, it speaks volumes. On behalf of Pastor Cleo and I and this entire ministry, we are so grateful for the love and support that you've given us over the years. Many of you in here we have long-term relationship with. We thank you so much for coming. I honor the Lord today for the fellowship, Kingdom Covenant Fellowship, that I have been privileged to serve as the presiding prelate for the last just about four years. We started with two churches and almost four years later we totaled somewhere about 25 or 26 churches that we cover in the Bahamas, in the US of A, in Africa. Come on, let's give God praise for that. And many of them from our local area is here with us tonight and, and I am just so thankful for each of you trusting me to be your leader trusting me to speak into your life and to give you direction and after this word tonight all I can say is the only place we go from here is up I honor the Lord for Kingdom Covenant Fellowship one more time can you really help me give God praise for them that's the men and women of God they're all over come on let's celebrate the Lord for them some of the greatest men and women of God on this side of heaven I love y'all Thank you all so much for being here this evening. I thank God for those who would have participated in this service tonight. Bishop Arthur Evans, job well done moderating the service. <laughs> Pastor Fanshawn, you outdid yourself tonight with that tribute. Come on, your husband is smiling in heaven. Come on, let's give God praise for her. Thank you so kindly. We love you. Prophet Pedro Cartwright, thank you so much. For lifting the offering for us our newest inductee into the fellowship pastor cameron roll from revival you church did the opening prayer for us god bless you sir thank you so much for all of what you'd have done and all of the worship leaders and the first impression workers and the swat team members and the media ministry and all of you who made this service what it was tonight we are so grateful to the Lord for you we've got so many pastors who are not a part of our fellowship that are here tonight we're just friends and we're connected can we give God a praise for all of the pastors I don't want to 
I don't want to call no names because if I call names, I'm going to get in trouble. But you know who you are. I would have seen you. I would have connected with you. And I say thank you so much for being here this evening. I honor the Lord for your presence. All of you who've come to visit with us tonight, I honor the Lord. Our daughter, Nishan Johnson, is in the house also. Amen. Hallelujah. Such a joy to see you in the house tonight. Amen. Always coming back home when a special event is taking place. We thank God for her. Also, Pastor Brian Bain from Judah's house. Come on, let's make some noise. Pastor B and of course his wife in her absence. We honor the Lord for them. They were part of our ministry and they were released to go out there and do the work that God has placed in their heart and they're doing just that and we thank God for Judah's house. Amen. Come on, let's give God another clap of praise for that. And to all of you, my father's children, we love you and we thank God so much for you. Now there's something special happening on tomorrow night. Is there anyone from the pastoral anniversary team here? Real quickly, what's happening tomorrow night? Just before we close our service, amen. Let's tell them what's happening tomorrow night as we get ready to go. Come on, you come on. You get, yeah, as we get ready to go to uh, a special place tomorrow night. Let us know real quickly what's going to happen tomorrow night. Good evening, everyone. Come on, good evening, everyone. Listen, I can feel the love. Love is something that you give away. Let's give it up for Bishop and Pastor Cleo. All right, y'all, I'll be quick. It's a celebration, y'all, tomorrow. Tomorrow evening, boarding time, 6.30 p.m. Bishop said we could only take it up from here. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who came to Life Changes International Ministries, tomorrow evening, we've been cleared for takeoff. What was the West Foyer will be turned into Harvest International Airport. It only makes sense. It's the year of abundant harvest. All right. 6.30 p.m. is boarding time. 7 p.m. we take off. We'll have surprises and prizes. And listen to me, y'all. We also have a grand prize. The best impersonation of Bishop and Pastor Cleo. You got to come hard, man. You got to come hard. So listen here, come with your armor bearers if you need to. In addition to that, because this is a real airport, we'll have a concession stand, we're gonna have customs, we're gonna have all kind of things coming on. Now, listen, little disclaimer, gotta be quick. To check in for this flight, you're only allowed one bag, one piece. It have to fit underneath your chair, all right? Under your chair, do you wanna know why? It can't be heavy, we have a lot of partying and carrying on. Go going on so listen to me one bike now let me tell you why you need one bike you have to come light the only reason you need a space under your chair is because you got to bring that little blue thing that's what it is blue blue all things blue some are so crazy in here all might be wearing blue just to remind you you're here your nails everything so listen bring that love gift blue look just like this and if you can't remember just look at me we're going to come and love, um, love up on Pastor Cleo and Bishop tomorrow. So tomorrow evening, 6.30 p.m., Harvest International. We're going to check in at 6.30, 7 p.m. We're off to start. We're going to party and have a wonderful time. Look forward to seeing you all. Amen. Let's give Sister Myra a round of applause. We want to also celebrate the Lord tonight for our serving pastors. I have one of the best pastoral teams on this side of heaven. Can we give God praise for our serving pastors? And of course, Dr. Glenn, who did that wonderful welcome tonight. Come on, let's honor the Lord for Dr. Glenn. Amen. God bless you. We're so honored always to have our mother in love, my mother in love, Dr. Cleo's mom, Reverend Carnetta Ferguson. She's always here with us during these special occasions. And Mother Fergie, we love you. We thank God so much for you. We appreciate your love and support. You've been with us from year number one. And now this is, matter of fact, she preached the first message. Yeah, when we opened up in 2003, her message was entitled, Up Out of the Ground. April 20th, 2003. That's right, she declared that word. Come on, so your name is written. While Apostle Wells might have the record for preaching the most times in this church, you got the first, and you only can make the first, first, one time. <laughs> Let's give God praise for Reverend Cadetta Ferguson. I'm not sure if Dr. Mavis Thompson is here tonight. Is she here? Is she here? Oh, she's right there. Doc is right in the back there. Let's give Dr. Mavis Thompson a great big round of applause. Amen, Doc. Just wait so they can see you, Doc. 
Amen. God bless you. God bless you. All right, so let's lock hands one more time all over this sanctuary. Amen. I thank God for this woman right next to me. My God. I can't imagine doing ministry without this gift. She makes ministry worthwhile. And I thank God for her. Thank you, Life Changer Rights. Thank you for your support. We love this church. We love this people. Tomorrow night, we do it all over again. It's going to be a party tomorrow night, though. Then Sunday morning, 7.30 at Bozine, my pastor Alex Archer will be in the house. And then 9.30, Apostle Gilbert Rule will close out at 9.30 a.m. right here at the city. We love you. We declare the blessings of God upon you. May his peace go with you even now and forevermore. And may you experience the abundant harvest that God has for you. Father, we thank you even now that as we leave this place, but not your presence, may your blessings, may your covering, may your peace be with us. We thank you even now, God, that what the enemy meant for evil, God, you've already turned it around for our good. And for this, we say thank you. Bless us now as we leave this place, but not your presence. And may you continue to bless the remainder of the celebrations in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of God's Holy Spirit. And all of God's people say... Amen and amen. Hug someone before you leave. Tell them you love them in Jesus' wow, name. what a powerful message. It is our prayer that you were blessed by something that was said. If you made the decision to make Jesus Lord and Savior of your life and you desire prayer, please reach out to us because we have a team of intercessors standing by waiting to pray with you. At this time, we'd like to say a special thank you to our owners, our followers, and our partners who have continuously supported our ministry through your faithful giving. Because of your generosity, Life Changers Ministries can continue to advance the kingdom of God right here on earth. If you would like to sow into our ministry, you can do so via direct deposit or online transfer through Commonwealth Bank using the account number 3002186, via Royal Bank of Canada using the account number 05456-1005156, or via Bank of the Bahamas, Branch 195, account number 135 0005402. You can also give via PayPal using the short code paypal.me slash LCMIGive via Suncash by using the short code suncash.me slash LCMIGive or via Givelify by searching Life Changers Ministries International. And finally, you can give via debit or credit card by inboxing us and our trusted accountants will be standing by for processing. Well, that brings us to the end of our broadcast, and we want to thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok, and we'll see you right here when we gather again.